Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. So, you've decided to invest in the very best of the 1980s microcomputer technology, only to find it's complaining something about the clock, something about its settings. Well, that's because some of these contain batteries. In fact, they nearly all do if they're a BBC master. They'll either contain a lithium chargeable battery here that looks like a, an AA cell, but it's not. Or this, which I think was an aftermarket edition, which is a regular type of battery. And um, something that by now will almost certainly be dead. So you can probably go out and re buy replacements for this or this. Remember, it has circuitry to recharge the lithium cell, but these things are not rechargeable. And I'm going to show you why that is. So take your screwdriver, assuming you've already got the cover off, of course. I mean, you've got to figure out some things for yourself, quite frankly. I can't do it all for you. Undo the screws for this. And of course, I'm not plugged into the mains at this point. He checks. Yes, definitely. And have a look at this lead. It's very easy to get confused with how this lead goes back. There's no sort of niche notches to lock it, lock it in. I was going to say to lock it in. It's not lodged in. It's just placed there. Now, unplug it from there. And then you can remove this. And what you'll need to do then, just take yourself your knife. And if you cut through there, like so, you'll discover... Probably, like this one, crusty AA cells. And they are just normal alkali batteries. And it does say on here, replace this whole thing. It's not a serviceable part. Now, I'll tell you why. That's because it's basically, you can see, just a battery slap plus some additional stuff. But you can service this. And that's what we're going to do right now. So what I suggest you do is unplug this battery snap. And it's just a 9 volt style connector, which is kind of cute, isn't it? That's quite neat. And that allows you to remove this whole thing. I'm going to just put this yellow tape here for now. And be very careful that it's covered in this corrode... Oh, gosh, let me do this over the bin. Sorry. Um, it's covered in this kind of corrosive battery effluence, which is going to be a big problem for you. So I'm going to leave that right there so you can see that. But just before we put everything else away, and I'm just wiping something off screen so we don't get it all over my hand, is this metal plate. And if I bend this over, you'll see there's some componentry in there. And that's basically why they don't want you to replace it, because they don't want you to mess that up. And that componentry is quite simply a diode and a resistor. So it's a 120 ohm resistor and a diode to prevent the cells from charging up. And I could, maybe in a future video, I'm going to grab something like this battery case, which is a four battery cell with actually a nice on off switch and we'll build one and when in the space of an empty battery we'll put our resistor and diodes it's quite easy to make your own and um, depends how you want to if you want to preserve some of your original bbc-ness so it has that yellow tape what you can do just cut off any crusty bits like that chuck it in the bin you don't want that in your life you don't need it and at least then it kind of retains that same look when it pops back in and you can just again keep a piece of this if you want to do just that really just tape that in like that so that's nice and done so it means all we need to do now is decide what we're going to do to service this thing so the first thing i would suggest um if you've got a bin near you ideally and don't do it over a microcomputer is to lever out your batteries and uh, well, we can have a look and zoom in in fact, I could almost push this computer aside and do this on the bench where nothing can get damaged. But that doesn't sound like enough fun to me at all. So you can see it's all green and gunky. So watch the polarity and watch this thing doesn't spring out and sort of get acid in your eye or something. That will be definitely bad news for it to do that. Ooh, -ee, look at that. Crusty, crusty. Now, what I would suggest you do is get rid of the batteries carefully and then take your snap out into the garden or into your kitchen or somewhere with a big glass bowl that you can wash out loads of times to make sure it's bloody usable and you're not going to poison yourself and clean the hell out of this. And I, I think I, if I recall correctly, it's been a while since I've done them, ah, that I've used um, basically vinegar. Things like vinegar will just get rid of that crustiness. So I'm going to go away real quick, do that and come back with this nice and clean. 
beyond this, then it should be reasonably simple. Uh, you know, like a simple case of finding some batteries, which I'm kind of looking <laughs> around here for. So I found three Energizer. Um, let's just check. You want alkaline, ideally. Yes, alkaline batteries, which, to be honest, most batteries these days are. I'm guessing back then you used to have those options of mercury and things like that. So ideally we're looking at around four and a half volts, uh, which I might not be getting because again, these are older batteries. But let's have a look, see what we get. Uh, 4.89, so actually that's pretty good, right? Pretty happy with that. So then the, all you gotta do, it's nice and simple then, pop that back on there. And we're gonna push that right up to the edge so it's locked in. Let's zoom out a bit so we get a bit more room. And I'll clip that there. Now, the next step I would think is, is, is useful and that's to secure the um, battery back to the shell. Now if you've got some yellow coloured uh, insulation tape you're going to do a great job. I couldn't find any on my shelf so I'm going to use some of this which is earth colour so it's green and yellow but it does the same job and you don't have to go nuts with it really to be honest with you. It's Remember this is all screwed down so one, t one twist, one twist will be enough. Let's get that twist going on there like that. And you can do take as much care, as little care as you like on this, really. It's up to you. Someone's going to be seeing your handiwork one day, perhaps. And there you go. And what could be a nice touch, actually, is writing the date on it. So, you know, you could write um, here like SEP18. So that could be useful to somebody in the future, couldn't it, if they find that? I'd like to know when to change it. So let's pop that back in and the job is a good one. In fact, <laughs> say it's a good one, it could be a good idea to wipe any skunk from in there if any uh, you can see any going on. So how was this fitted? It must have been this way around. Indeedy. Yes, indeedy. So if you're making your own, and you can plug that in back there, again the red is down and the black is up. If you're making your own, what I would suggest you do is play with the battery snaps like these and see if you can fit them in. I mean, to be honest, there's loads of room and you could have it floating around anyway or put a bit of Velcro on it. And the only bit's tricky is finding this sort of um, header here, this sort of connector with the right pin pitch and everything. Um, you've got lots of options, really. You could go on your RS and, and things like that or... Um, salvage something i mean i had lots of things i could salvage stuff from um so that's what i could do so uh and there we go so all that remains now we've got the last screw going on all that remains is really just to power that up and see now if we still get the same error funnily enough i haven't actually used this machine before and it seems to be looking for a disk drive so i download off the internet this and it's a big configuration guide it's basically follow this guide to set up the uh, things after you put that back in. So, uh, hmm, that's interesting. I don't remember where the website's from, but uh, if you type in, you know, master128 configuration, it'll probably come up with something. I'll put a link down below and I remember to do this. Right, so I guess I gotta get typing. I kid you not, the R key seems to be the only key on this keyboard that doesn't bloody work. It's very weird, isn't it? Oh, bloody things. Hi-ho! 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 It's off to work we go! With a bucket and a spade and a hand grenade! Hi-ho! 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 It's off to work we go! Good! Dag nam it. Fifth of the twelve, eighty-six. Curse you. <sighs> Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth. Okay. These unscrew, by the way, if you didn't notice. Very tricksy. These be tricksy little hobbits, they be.
I think someone's been in here. That's glued on, or was glued on indeed. Ah! Good luck getting that back in there without tweezers. Great success! And I start again. As you can see, it's all working and doing kind of what it should be doing. So that's great. So I'm really quite happy. So there you go. How to sort out your master battery. Actually, I might have jumped the gun a bit. I just wanted to show you this. I just actually did type in all of these commands and the bit that shows that it's all working is that actually when you turn it on and you'll hear the beep, watch the screen. It's booting into the sort of regular basic prompt and that's because I've entered all these settings. If um, you didn't have the memory in, basically go to that sort of high res prompt we saw earlier. So yeah, very pleased indeed.